<laughs> Where are the wires exactly? Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. Today I am at the 2022 Bugarama Volkswagen event and I'm going to be showing you the latest version of my DIY engine control module system. All right, the PCBs have arrived. Within these boxes, we have the main four coil engine control module PCB and the daughter board that's going to be installed inside the 009 distributor to give it the signal for the spark timing. We're gonna try to get this four coil system up and running in the next two weeks for the Phoenix Bugarama. Now, before we go any further and get ready for the upcoming Bugarama event, I do want to emphasize that this system is really tailored at this point for the Volkswagen engine platform. The optical spark ignition boards that I've designed here are specifically intended to go inside of a 009 Bosch Volkswagen style distributor, and they're really specialized for that type of distributor down to the individual routing along the edges of the boards. Furthermore, this particular platform is specifically designed for four-cylinder engines. That's because it has four independent coils which are going to ignite four independent cylinders. If you have a different number of cylinders or are interested in some other type of engine, I recommend checking out my other videos on the single coil variety of this simple DIY engine control system, as this can be used with any distributor and only uses the mechanical points or a comparable point system such as uh, a digital points detection system that's external to the original distributor for its signal input. In other words, this will work with all different numbers of cylinders, whereas this system we're building here is really best suited for four cylinder engines and if you use these particular daughter boards is really best suited for uh, the Volkswagen Beetle engine. Let's proceed. You'll want to be sure that you have all of the necessary materials and components for building the PCB before starting the production process. You can find all of these materials listed on the bill of materials which you can get alongside the PCB files on GitHub. Feel free to substitute any equivalent or near equivalent components as needed and you should be able to make this board work just as well. Before you assemble your PCB, you're going to want to set the output voltage of the boost converter module. The purpose of this module is to hold up the output voltage to the circuit during times when the supply voltage from the battery is low, for example when the starter motor is cranking. What I recommend doing first is setting your bench power supply to somewhere around 6 volts, connecting the input positive and negative leads to the input sides of the converter, taking your multimeter and putting it on the output of the converter and using this as a method for setting the output converter voltage. As you can see, it's currently supplying 20 volts. This is too high. We want to set the output to somewhere between 12 and 13 volts so that it's not constantly trying to raise the voltage over the alternator charging voltage, but at the same time, it provides close to the nominal 12 to 13 volt battery voltage that we expect. So what we're going to do is rotate the uh, small screw, the trimmer pot using a small screwdriver, and we're going to set the direction of rotation such that the voltage decreases. We'll continue to decrease the setting of the voltage until we get somewhere between 12 and 13 volts, like we are right now. Once we're at this voltage range, we can leave it and disconnect power, and we will have a properly set up converter. Now that these printed circuit boards have arrived, we're going to have to populate the components on them. Each of these printed circuit boards has individual locations where all of the relevant components can be inserted, and they are marked with reference designators and their respective values. One of the significant things about these boards that's worth mentioning is these are single-sided copper, meaning that these can be very easily made even without the ability to build through-hole vias that are plated. In other words, you could use a simple process like a home etching process or even a CNC routing on a blank copper board to make this PCB. This other PCB here, which is the optical interrupter board, isn't necessarily the same way. It does have a full copper plane on both sides. However, 
this back copper plane is only there for grounding between individual components and could potentially be omitted and replaced with individual wires if all you need is a board with a single-sided copper layer. In other words, these boards can be generated on a very large range of different machine, machinery and processes for PCB production. Now we'll go ahead and do the assembly for these boards. So I've got the iron set at 360 degrees, I've got it nice and clean, and I'm going to start out with a 5.6 volt Zener diode, so I'm going to get this in with the cathode in the correct orientation, uh, press it all the way down so that it's going to be nicely seated, and now I'm going to flip over the board, maybe bend the leads out a little bit, and I'm going to start soldering on it. So we'll get this one done now, and get that solder fully flowed in. Same for the other side. Wipe the soldering iron to keep it clean and then crop the leads down. Now we'll move on to the next ones. One hour later. Now there's one final thing that these boards do have. Since they are single-sided boards, there are a couple of cheats. It's marked as wire. You can get any piece of cut-off conductor or leftover material you want. Doesn't matter. You can even use actual insulated wire if you want but you want to just bridge anything on these boards that says wire with a piece of wire. Basically, that's just a way of jumping over a trace on the board that otherwise would have been very circuitous or even impossible to get with just single-sided copper. So you'll see this is just making that jump over this trace there. And as with any component, we can crop the leads off now that we're done. So there it is. Now we've got the board fully populated and I believe we have all of our components satisfied there. Now that you've soldered your board together and programmed microcontrollers, we can now go through the wiring configuration for the inputs and outputs of the board. On the most recent version of this board, all of the outputs are fully labeled, so it'll be very easy to show the connections to the outputs. On this version, the labels are not yet added. That being said, all of the terminal blocks are in the same respective locations, so you can wire them in much the same way with the latest version of the board, available on GitHub. We'll start out talking about the inputs to the board. We have a set of auxiliary digital inputs. These are typically not used by my program, but they could be used for things like starter motor detection or other binary sensor input detections. These input pins are 12 volt tolerant, so you can connect them directly to automotive signals. The next set are the optical points connections. This board is, it must be used specifically with an optical or other two sensor distributor pickup system, not an original OEM points system. That is one limitation of the four coil system, but at the same time, the amount of advantage given by independent uh, ignition control using these two input sensors from the distributor really do outweigh the overall uh, costs of having to set up that secondary board. So the way these optical point signals work is they will go to respectively the S1 and S2 connections on the optical pickup board, which you can also find published to GitHub for the Volkswagen Beetle and which can be easily adapted for use on the, uh, any other engine by simply modifying the Eagle board layout files. Typically, this pickup board will also receive plus 12 volts and ground separately, but it can also be supplied by plus 12 volts and ground from the 12 volt input of the board. That brings us to the 12 volt input of the board. This is the power in which we go to chassis ground on the negative and a key switched input of plus 12 volts on the positive. Uh, I recommend a key switched input so that this board only powers up when you have the engine or power turned on to the engine. You don't want to connect it directly to the battery as it would run all the time and then eventually discharge the battery. Now we'll talk about the outputs connected to the board. We have a whole bunch of transistors, six to be exact. The first transistor is connected to an output for the fuel injection system. The fuel injector is just a simple solenoid coil which can be wired directly across this. Here's an example of a fuel injector, and you can either use a slip-on connector dedicated for this type of injector or whatever type you're using, or you can simply solder wires to the pins. Both options work quite well. 
Some fuel injectors do have a preferred positive output, and on the most recent version of the board, the positive and negative outputs of the transistor lines are marked, so you can wire this up trivially. The next connection is not actually used by my program. This is an auxiliary MOSFET designed to be able to control an idle air control valve or another relay or solenoid within the vehicle, and this can be configured to be used in the program code if desired. This one is addressed by the fuel controller MOSFET or the fuel controller microcontroller, and as such, you should write your code on the fuel control version or the fuel control I, uh, microcontroller if you wish to control this MOSFET. Now we'll get on to the next MOSFET or the next bank of four MOSFETs as these are what make this four coil board unique. These are the ignition control MOSFETs. Each one of these ignition control MOSFETs is designed to be wired to an output spark ignition coil. So these spark ignition coils are typically wired in such a way that the primary and secondary are bonded internally and the output will go to the spark plug where it can then drive a spark to the ground of the engine. Each one of these four is connected to a separate spark plug or spark ignition coil. You can use standard ignition coils like these, which can be found at relatively low cost on Amazon. You can actually buy a pack of eight of these for about $29, and you're only going to need four if you're using a board like this, so they're really quite affordable. Now, this is where you need to get the firing order set up correctly, and this will vary from engine to engine. As an example, I'll talk about a Volkswagen Beetle engine, as that's the application that I use this system to operate. The way that this system works, uh, regardless of engine configuration, is that the top two MOSFETs, this one and this one, are tied together. They fire at the same time. The bottom two are also tied together. They fire at the same time. What this means is we can configure this as a wasted spark system, where when one cylinder is on its ignition stroke and we want to have an explosion, the other cylinder should be at the very end of its exhaust stroke, when the spark will do nothing and will not cause any sort of a detonation or backfire. As such, we want to connect the opposing cylinders in the firing order to the respective banks. For example, in the Volkswagen Beetle, the firing order is typically 1, 4, 3, 2. As a result, we want to fire 1 and 3 together, because 1 and 3 are both going to be firing. Uh, one, of them, one will be firing and 3 will be exhausting together. And we want to fire 4 and 2 together, because 4 will be firing when 2 is exhausting and vice versa. On the configuration specified on my optical points board, based on the connections of S2 and S1, what I recommend is running cylinders 1 and 3 off of the top two uh, outputs, and it doesn't matter which you use, you can do 1 and 3, or you can do 3 and 1, and I recommend running 4 and 2 on the bottom MOSFETs, 4, 2, or 2, 4. This will allow both of these sets of cylinders to fire at the appropriate times for a wasted spark system, based on the inputs of the published uh, optical distributor unit or optical distributor board on GitHub. That's an overall description of how this gets connected on the inputs and outputs side. The final thing to discuss on this is actually the map sensor. I provide three analog inputs, all of which are broken out to both microcontrollers, but this first one, A0, is the one you should connect to the map sensor. This map sensor A0 is basically configured in the signal, ground, and plus five volt uh, sequence of, configured, of configured pins, and you can actually get connectors which have a corresponding color code that fit into these quite nicely. So for example, if I plug this in, the yellow wire becomes the signal, the black wire becomes the ground, and the red wire becomes the plus 5 volts. These can then be wired to your uh, preferred type of map sensor using those three connections. That's pretty much it, and that's how you would set it up. An additional step required to make the optical interrupter circuit work will be to construct an optical interrupter rotor or attachment for the original distributor rotor which you can use to trigger the optical pickups on the PCB. Now the way that I suggest doing this is actually by downloading the 3D model files from GitHub for this pre-fashioned optical rotor uh, attachment. This attachment has been specifically suited to plug onto Bosch distributor rotors, and it's been outlined such that it actually fits only in one direction and will ensure correct timing and correct angle for the two interrupter flaps. This ensures that it will be optimally compatible with the software and hardware published on GitHub. That being said, if you don't have access to high temperature plastic or high temperature metal CNCing, it may also be beneficial to simply fashion one out of a material you have on hand, such as a copper pipe fitting. 
I actually operated the car with this copper pipe fitting unit for many months and never had any problems at all with it, but I've recently upgraded to this 3D printed polycarbonate version. It is very important to select a high temperature plastic if you're going to 3D print this part, because if it melts while the car is operating and these flaps fly off or dislodge, you will lose spark timing and completely lose ignition, quite possibly without any forewarning. That being said, if you do print this in a high temperature plastic, it is important to make sure that if this is a translucent or clear plastic, like the polycarbonate you see here, you want to make sure you also coat this with an opaque layer, whether it be paint or some other coating, to ensure that infrared light from the sensors can't get through the optical interrupters, uh, which can happen in these uh, translucent or white colored plastics. Uh, if you use a metal or high temperature uh, opaque plastic, this is not an issue and you don't need to worry about that. Regardless of how you configure this, this little attachment should make it nice and easy to use your 009 distributor or equivalent distributor as an optical digital signal for your ECM system. All of the files and assets required for building this engine control system yourself can be found on the John Patterson Consulting Dune Buggy EFI repository on GitHub. This repository is also linked in the video description. If you navigate to the 4Coil ECM subfolder, you'll be able to view the categorized files for the project. First off, we have the code files, which you can use the Arduino IDE to upload to the respective Arduino Nanos on the PCB. The first of which controls the spark ignition system, and the second of which controls the fuel injection uh, system for this PCB. Both of these can be user configurable to the parameters of your engine, as well as the timing configuration of your distributor. Going back to the previous directory, we can also view the PCB files for both the main engine control module and additionally the optical spark daughter board which will be installed within the distributor on your car. The main engine control folder contains all of the files for designing the board and additionally includes the zip file of the Gerbers for direct sending to a PCB manufacturing house. We can also see those respective files for the optical spark board, which will be installed in your distributor in the same format as the main board. Finally, within the PCB files folder, we can also see an Excel spreadsheet containing a bill of materials of suggested components, which you can use on the two different boards. Substitute components can also be used if necessary. Finally, in addition to all of those files, I've also uploaded some CAD files for the optical rotor, which will actually go on the original Bosch distributor uh, rotor in order to allow the optical board to pick up the timing signals from the distributor rotation. This same file has been included as a SOLIDWORKS file, a STEP file, and an STL file, any of which can be sent directly to a CNC or 3D printing company such as Zometry to be produced in a high temperature process such as polycarbonate or aluminum CNC machining. Well, there you saw the performance of the new four coil ignition system. Thanks for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.